This is Mark Tobias with Mark Handels at Salto Systems Headquarters near San Sebastian, Spain. And we're going to talk today about electronic access control systems, where the industry is at, where it's going, why Salto is one of the leaders in the industry, and then we're going to talk about specific products. Mark, uh, first of all, you're responsible at Salto for? I'm responsible for global marketing and sales um, since the beginning. I'm also one of the, uh, the founders of the company. Um, and uh, with the only exception that in the U.S., um, of course, uh, we have a, a team taking care uh, of the sales-specific uh, issues over there. But for the rest, I'll take care uh, on a worldwide basis for marketing. And Salto Systems, how many countries do you operate in? Oh, we uh, f since the beginning. So Salto is, uh, is, uh, is what you call a born global. Uh, company, um, so we actually don't even have a difference between a, a, a domestic sales department and an export uh, department. We only make difference between uh, basically marketing and sales. Um, so we have operated as from day one into multiple countries. Uh, actually, sales in, in in Spain are less than 10 percent of our uh, our turnover, and I would say that today we operate in some 65 countries either through our own uh, uh, branch offices or, uh, or offices or through distributors. Okay, and when was the company founded? Yeah, the company was founded uh, as a company in the year 2000, uh, but re re really in reality the company became operational in 2001. Uh, the first uh, electronic access control products left our factory in June 2001, so in a, in a, few, in a couple of months from now it will be eight years. And how big is your facility here? Okay, um, so this is this is now our uh, our second facility that we have here. We started uh, as all small startups in a very small rented facility, some ten minutes from here. Um, and then two years ago, we uh, we had already grown out of our jackets, so to say, and we bought this facility, which is built on a six thousand square meter. Uh, area and the factory is built, uh, and we could only build on half of that to keep the area nice and green. Uh, and the factory is uh, built on a th is a 3,000 square meter factory with an additional uh, 1,000 square meter office uh, space. And how many employees? We have some 130 uh, employees and and growing at very high speed, uh, and that includes people here uh, manufacturing, and but it also would include the team in the U.S. or our people in KL. Um, and your primary mission? A primary mission. Uh, I mean, oh, th th this will to sound sell, to, uh, to uh, sell locks. Oh yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it, it, it actually, well, it, it was actually when we started, uh, we had this strange idea of uh, to 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 bring like to democratize the access control world and bring access control to as many doors as possible. Uh, don't forget that now uh, electronic locking starts uh, to become something which is acceptable. But before 2001, before Salto came into the picture, electronic locks were basically used in hotels and in in, in student dorms, and uh, nobody. Was really thinking about using electronic locks uh, in corporate buildings, in, ha in, 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 in airports, and stuff like that. So I mean, so yes, our, our mission is really to bring access control to as many doors as possible. Um, some of your facilities, specifically hotels, have won awards, design awards. Yeah, I mean. But, uh, this is a very good question, Mark. Did you ask, uh, ask us this? Although this is, this is funny that we have made a sort of uh, evolution in our company. When, when we started um, eight years ago, eight, nine years ago, uh, the first thing that, that was different about uh, our products was that we reduced the size of the typical electronic lock to basically 50% of what it was before. So we suddenly we said an electronic lock does not necessarily have to be bulky, big and ugly simply because it's a good product. We said it can be a great product and still look good. Um, so you, we have been used a lot in 
high-end buildings in, 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 in buildings that have won uh, architectural awards. Just recently in, in Bulgaria, two hotels that have won uh, awards about the design of the whole building, they specifically selected our locks that, that were the ones that fitted into that concept. But also uh, take for instance T5 in, at Heathrow Airport here in, uh, here in London, which is uh, a project that is right now the largest terminal in, in Europe. It is fitted with 3,000 Salto products. Uh, so, so, I mean, so, it, so Salto has made it possible to make the convergence between great functionality without having to reduce your, your, your level of, 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 of demand on, on the design side. Ergonometrics, they're beautiful. Um, they're very modern, sleek design locks. Yeah. Uh, and so I assume Heathrow Terminal 5, for example, was in planning for 15 years. I'm assuming they did a better job of planning the locking systems than they did the baggage systems. Oh, well, they, <laughs> <laughs> they did a much better job. <laughs> a far better job. <laughs> with with 30,000 bags being shipped to Italy yeah. uh, to be sorted because they couldn't make the baggage system. No, no, no. So, no, no. They, did a, they did a great job selecting their locking system. So you didn't have the problem with the locks not working when no. they were installed? No, no, no. That, that, I mean, a lot of people are, are asking me this, but uh, no, the, the locks worked as from day one. <laughs> um, and certifications, uh, CEN in Europe and UL in America. Yes, so, so certification is of course an important issue. Um, in, in Europe you have of course all the fire regulations, the EN 1634, um, which you just have to comply with, otherwise you can't deal with it. In Europe we have other standards as well. Salto has launched the last, uh, during the last part of, of 2008 also compatibility with panic bar systems where there is another uh, standard coming into play which is the EN 1125 which we comply with. Then then there is the, the, the standard, which is the EN 1906, uh, which deals with, with a whole variety of points, going from security levels, uh, with the usage that it has to be strong, that you can use it in an airport and stuff like that. Uh, we have passed those standards as well. Um, of course, in the U.S., you have the ANSI standards, uh, uh, ANSI Grade 1, the, the 156.25 uh, is an important one. Um, we are uh, obtaining that standard in the next few weeks. We're getting the certificate. So yes, standardization, so not only say that you're good, but being able to demonstrate it is it's important. Although, I mean, the standards is only part of it. We, 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 we don't turn the standard we, we don't just want to comply with a standard. That is just something that you need to do. But it is not where we want to stay. We are normally trying to go beyond everything that is demanded from well, us. Well, that's good because, uh, as, as you're aware, we've done a lot of work with regard to standards and the insecurity of what the standards seek to protect and, in reality, often do not because the standards are rather rigid and they don't test for a number of real-world options that uh, we'll talk about later. We have tested your locks for to make sure that they're actually secure in the real world. What kind of engineering staff do you have on board here? Okay, well, we, we, no, we normally don't talk too much about the numbers um, to make that public, but I can give you, I think, uh, two important informations. One is that, and then you can start already make your own calculations, that the R&D stuff, st stuff uh, in Salto counts for more, uh, for significantly more than 10% of the workforce. Uh, that is on one side. Um, and on the other side is that we do everything in-house. So um, our R&D director, which is the real spiritual father and founder of this company, um, is a person that believes that none of the three engineering pillars of our product, being mechanical, being it electronics, firmware and, and, and the physical design of the boards and everything, and of course software, none of those three should be outsourced. We have to control all three of them. And people have to be in the same room. And if you even look at the R&D department, I think you were there just right. briefly, you see that there is actually a flow which areas worked more closely together than other ones. And he believes they have to hear, they have to understand. So engineering for us is extremely important. And I, and I know actually, Mark, that you believe the same, that in electronic locking, um, 
yes, it is a lot about codes, about software, and about encryption, and about security levels, but also the mechanical protection is, of course, to, is, 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 is also important because if that would be easy to bypass, then at, at the end of the day you have nothing. Yeah, so for us, it's really the three areas that are important in our company. Yeah, that's a very important point, and we'll touch on it later okay. because everybody is enamored with electronic access control and the variance and the type of credentials that you can control these locks, but at the end of the day, they're mechanical locks because mechanics still have to open the door. Absolutely. And so you can have the most secure credentials, but if we can bypass a lock with other techniques, then it doesn't mean anything. And in fact, it's more dangerous because you may bypass the audit control functions, which means you don't know they were there. Exactly. Um, sorry, I, I, in, in when you ask about the standards, again, it is a little bit more European, but for instance, uh, you are very well aware that we have also, apart from what we call our lock sets, our handle sets, we also have cylinders, electronic cylinders. Yes. Uh, those, for instance, they are awarded with the highest security, physical security standards that you can have in Europe. So in Germany with the, the VDS, yeah. VDS, VDS standards. And in Holland where they also have a lot of tradition on working together with the police force, which is the SK, SKG standards, we have the highest standard. So, so again pointing out that we understand very much that also the mechanical protection of those elements is extremely important. Yes, um, but again I, I would point out that for example, VDS, which is recognized as the agency in Europe, um, they actually did not, they've evaluated some locks, for example, lock bumping, okay. and cleared them that they were secure against that technique, and then um, we went and proved that proved those it locks otherwise. could be opened, yeah. like in seconds. Yeah. And so we've been really pushing on real-world testing, as we call it, uh, to ensure that the standards really test for real-world. Well, and, and, and we would actually agree to that. That's really good. Yeah, so no, that's, that, I mean, that's why we actually tested Because that locks. separates the different, the different products from each other. That, 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 that's correct. Yeah. And so you produce a complete line of electronic access control systems. Absolutely. Absolutely. That f for a user you really can supply all the products they need. Absolutely. Uh, and we're going to talk about each of those products.